Greetings and welcome to the introduction to astronomy. In this lecture, we are going to present an overview of our solar system. So we're going to look at all of the different types of objects that exist in our solar system and talk a lot about them a little bit. Now, we will go over them in great more, more detail in other lectures. We'll go into each of these in much more detail. So let's start off by looking at what we have in our solar system. So if we want to look out and take a quick inventory of our solar system, so what do we see in the solar system? Well, we can look at this two different ways. What do we know now? Here's what we know now that our solar system contains. Here's what we knew in ancient times. So it was a little bit different in ancient times. We looked at our solar system as the universe. So we saw that it had the sun, but it also had the sphere of the stars. There were five planets known. Uranus and Neptune had not yet been discovered and the Earth would not have been considered a planet. There was only one moon known that was ours and we knew of meteors what we see as shooting stars and comets. Now over the years and now we see a lot more and we have a better understanding of it. Now we know that our solar system contains one and only one star and that the rest of the stars are actually could be parts of other solar systems. We are now up to eight planets, five dwarf planets, and more than 150 moons known throughout the solar system. Asteroids have been discovered, which were not known in ancient times. Interplanetary gas and dust. Uh, we see some of that as meteors, but now we see it as also other parts of the solar system. Kuiper belt objects, again, completely unknown in ancient times. And of course, we still know of comets, but we have a much better understanding of them. So let's look a at a little bit in each of these in a little more detail. So let's look at the masses first of all. How massive are these objects? Well, the sun is essentially all of the mass of the solar system, 99.8% of the mass of the solar system. And here we see in a chart, the yellow part, of course, being the mass of the sun. And the only planets that are actually showing up there are Jupiter and Saturn. They're the only ones that are massive enough to actually show up. The rest of the solar system uh, is just the rounding errors within the mass. And in fact, Jupiter and Saturn would contain 90% of the mass that remains after you take out the sun. So essentially, there's only a very small fraction, 0.02%, and if we split this down a little bit more, let's look at just the planets here. So Jupiter is most of the mass here in the orange. And then the gray for Saturn here takes up 90% of the planetary mass of the solar system. So really, in terms of the whole solar system mass, once you take out the sun and a couple of the very most massive planets, there's only a tiny fraction for everything else left in the solar system. So let's look at these planets and what, look at planets and what do we mean first of all by a planet? Well, a planet is now about it uh, back in the uh, 2006, 2005, 2006 was actually defined. And here we see an image showing each of our planets. There are the inner or terrestrial worlds, the Earth-like worlds, and the outer or Jovian worlds, the large gaseous uh, planets. But what we have done is to give a specific definition for a planet. And a planet has to do three things. First of all, it has to orbit the sun. So no matter how big the object is, if it does not orbit the sun, it's not considered a planet. So that will eliminate the larger moons that we'll see in the solar system. It, ha it has to be massive enough to have pulled itself into a spherical or ellipsoidal shape. That is essentially that it has reached equilibrium under gravity. So gravity has pulled it down uh, together and a sphere or an ellipsoid will be the most stable shape that can come out of that. And finally, it has to have cleared its orbit of debris. So it will not be orbiting in things like the asteroid belt or the Kuiper belt. It has not become gravita if it is there, it has not become gravitationally dominant and will not be a part of, uh, of the planetary systems.
Now there are a lot of other objects in the solar system. So let's look at some of those smaller objects we see in the solar system as well. Here we see, for example, the moons which orbit a planet or another larger object. So we see a number of the moons here in the solar system. There's our Earth for scale and there's the Earth's moon. You can see that some of these are incredibly small. So things like Phobos and Deimos are almost completely invisible. Uh, at this scale. Some of the larger moons are actually larger than our own. So things like Ganymede, Callisto and Titan are actually larger than our own moon here around Earth. So there are a number of moons around uh, these various planets. And in fact, we see them around all of the giant planets, Jupiter through Neptune, as well as the round in the inner solar system around Earth and Mars. Mercury and Venus have no moons. Now there are also a new class of objects that came up when we defined what a planet was. We also made the definition of a dwarf planet. And a dwarf planet are objects that meet the first two components of the definition of a planet, that they orbit the sun and that they are spherical or ellipsoidal. So right now, uh, at this point, there are five dwarf planets that are, have been defined. And those include Pluto, seen here in the middle, Eris, uh, the next object that was discovered, and uh, Haumea and Makemake, which are two other objects out in the depths of the solar system with, in Pluto, uh, what we actually call the Kuiper Belt. And we see uh, Ceres, which is known as the largest object in the asteroid belt and is also now classified as a dwarf planet. So a number of different objects there uh, that we see that are all now classified as dwarf planets. They're like planets, but you see how small they are compared in scale to our Earth here. So much, much smaller than our Earth and much smaller than any other planet that we see. In fact, uh, smaller even than the larger moons that we see in the solar system. And finally, there are also some other objects that have been discovered, uh, things like uh, the asteroids. And here we have some images of some various asteroids that have been studied. Uh, Ceres and Vesta have both had spacecraft orbit around them to be able to study them. So we've actually looked at those in more detail. Some of the other ones we've actually also visited. So we've now visited some asteroids and we've been able to study these. They are very small. You could take all of the asteroids in the asteroid belt and not even make one moon, uh, make up one moon. So we can see them here. They actually look like the lunar surface. But now we're getting smaller objects. They do orbit the sun, but that's the only thing that they have in common with the other objects. They are not spherical. Some are. Maybe Ceres, which was classified as a dwarf planet, would be. But Ida, Eros, and Gaspra are actually not spherical, and they just look like old cratered objects, like little pieces of our own moon. Now the other objects that we see here are comets. Now comets also orbit the sun. They are by no means spherical. Uh, we have an image of the comet uh, here that was observed by the Rosetta spacecraft uh, that actually orbited that comet. And this comet then has a big bulge on one side and another and a much thinner area in the middle. So we've now actually been able to see comets and study them up close. In ancient times, what we saw was something like this. This would have been the comet that we would have seen uh, at, from the Earth's surface. The actual nucleus, the part that we see enlarged here that we saw in great detail, would have been a tiny speck in the middle of this comet on, that we would see in the sky. So we've actually not only seen the comet and their tails and all of that, but we've actually been able to study them in, a, in much more detail and in fact have orbited comets and have actually collected uh, pieces of debris from comets. So next thing we want to look at is kind of an idea of what the solar system is to scale. And 
we look at this that if we just imagine taking something that is about 25 centimeters to represent the sun that would be a ball about 10 inches in diameter and then we looked at what everything else would be so if we were to scale everything down scale the sun down to a ball of that size we would find that mercury would be less than a millimeter in size and would be 10 meters away so you'd have this ball 10 meters away from it you would have the first planet in between those two is nothing the earth would be a little bit over a millimeter in size and would be 27 meters away so 27 uh, 27 meters uh, would be if you want to put that into feet if you're more familiar with that uh, multiply it by about three and you'd get close to 80 uh, between 80 and 90 feet away so you'd have to have quite a different distance a uh, distance for this uh, to be able to be seen so there's really a lot of empty space there now Jupiter would be two and a half centimeters in size and would now be a hundred and forty meters away or more than a football field away Pluto would be much tinier smaller even than Mercury about half a millimeter and would be a kilometer away from the Sun so in order to make a scale solar system we would have to need a kilometers worth of space to be able to to make this and most of that would be very empty there would only be those scattered little objects reaching as much as two and a half centimeters over that kilometer if you wanted to look at where the nearest star would be Alpha Centauri is about the same size as our Sun and would be about 7500 kilometers away so what we want to look at here is how empty everything is it is space is very empty the solar system is very empty so if we try to put everything to scale some of the pictures that we looked at where you see the Sun and the planets and everything looks close together are really not realistic representations of what the solar system is actually like now the last thing that we want to look at here is talking about how we name some solar system objects uh, it all depends on what the type of objects are there are various uh, things that are set to be able to, to to name the types of objects so if we look at for example planets and moons they are named after the gods and heroes from Greek and Roman mythology with one exception and that is Uranus and its moons which are named of characters from English literature so Uranus has a little bit different it's while well, it is named after you know uh, from Greek mythology it's uh, its moons are actually named for uh, things from uh, English literature uh, when we do the names the features on some of these there are different things that are taken uh, for the features on the different planets some are named after scientists like such as features on the moon others are named after various artists and other uh, other people now when we look at other objects comets are named differently comets are named after the discoverer so whoever discovers a comet gets their name attached to it or their names if multiple people happen to discover it uh, and at the same time asteroids differently are not named after the discoverer but are named by the discoverer so if you discover a new asteroid you get to pick the name for it subject of course to probably to certain restrictions you can't use anything that's uh, has already been taken of course and you can't use anything that would be an inappropriate name but for other objects the naming conventions are set by the International Astronomical Union and that would define exactly uh, how you name them and leaves for some consistency as to how things are named so let's finish up here with our summary which says that we're looking at the solar system it has a wide variety of types of objects and we've looked at a number of those but the most of the material is our Sun so the Sun has almost all of the material in the solar system the smaller solar system objects have a very varied structures and features so we'll look at those uh, in 
other lectures. If you want to look at them in more detail, you can look at some of the other lectures that will cover those in more detail. And finally, a scale model solar system is essentially impossible to construct because of the immense distances. You can either get things to scale in terms of distances or in terms of sizes. But trying to do both at the same time means that you need a lot of space and a lot of it has to be empty. And again, that's the key point here. The solar system and space itself are very empty. So that concludes our lecture on the uh, an introduction to the solar system. And we'll be back again next time for another topic in astronomy. So until then, have a great day everyone, and I will see you in class.